We are just minutes away from the two-year anniversary of the January 6th attack. And of the 20 Republicans who are currently holding up the speaker vote, it's important to note that 14 of them voted to overturn the results of the 2020 election. And as the House remains in gridlock on the anniversary of January 6th, The Washington Post is reporting that the Capitol tour guides have now been told only to mention the attack on the Capitol when they're asked. The Post points out, quote, it's a policy that in many ways reflects a country at odds with itself, unable to agree on fact and truth. With us for more, an American hero, former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund. His new book, released this week, is Courage Under Fire, Under Siege and Outnumbered, 58 to 1 on January 6th. Stephen, I am grateful that you're here tonight. I'm grateful for all the work that you've done for our country. I have to ask, how difficult was it for you to write this book, every word reliving theoretically the most awful day of your life? It was, uh, it was extremely difficult. You know, as I sit there and I think about when I was writing it, I was thinking about every single one of my officers and how much they went through that day. And it, it addresses not only January 6th, it addresses the days up to it, the 2020 uh, protests. But when I think about that day and what my men and women went through and what I saw, I had officers who had, were beaten, were knocked unconscious, had a two by four torn from the inaugural platform with nails sticking out of it and hitting the head. It, it was brutal what, what I saw and what they went through and they shouldn't have had to go through that. I think there was so many failures that led to it, but we shouldn't be here today. I shouldn't have had to write that book. It was very difficult to write, but I couldn't be prouder of the men and women of the police department, all the police departments that came and helped us. Um, I'm really proud of them and it was very difficult to write. Were you disappointed that the final January 6th report didn't go deeper into those intelligence failures because those failures failed you. They failed your men and women. The intelligence failures failed my men and women. The, the uh, Department of Defense failures failed my men and women. They didn't go into it. They didn't address it. The um, inspector general for the Department of Homeland Security, they acknowledged that there was failures, but doesn't seem to be holding anybody accountable. How do we know that's not gonna happen again? You know, the failures there with intelligence, the failures with the uh, Department of Defense, while my men and women were out there fighting, we could have prevented that. Why do you think you were so unprepared that day? We were so unprepared. You know, when you look back and the research I've put into this book, the amount of work that, that's in it and all the intelligence, you see, you know, I, I strike it up to really three things. Security on the Hill is so politicized. You know, I'm the only police chief in the United States of America that has a federal law that prevents me from bringing in resources in advance or while we're under attack without getting approval of the Capitol Police Board. And if I'm going to do it in advance, they have to get leadership approval. Think about that. That created a 71 minute delay while my men and women were fighting on the west front of the Capitol, waiting for approval from the Capitol Police Board just for me to call in federal, um, federal resources. When, when the police department's overwhelmed and we dial 911, we call the National Guard. And when I called the National Guard, they didn't come. What did they say? The, the National Guard, so when I finally got approval at 234, I had to get on a, a phone call with the Pentagon and beg and plead. I'm watching the TV. I'm watching my men and women. You're fight. watching your men and women get brutally attacked. You pick up the phone and call the National Guard, and what happens? They're watching the same thing I'm watching. They have main screen. They have TVs in every office in the Pentagon, watching the same thing that's going on. Watching my men and women get beaten, and I'm begging and pleading. You can talk. The mayor even said it. The chief of police from um, for Metropolitan Police Department said he was begging for for help. They didn't want to send National Guard anywhere. I want you to tell me what words did they say to you on the other end of the phone? So I'm talking, and it was Lieutenant General Piot. He says he's worried, quote, about the optics. He was worried about the look of the National Guard on the grounds of the, of the um, Capitol. What about the look that we're looking at our screen right now of people who are trying to beat to death your men and women and potentially our members of Congress and our vice president? Do you think that's a better look? I would much rather have military uh, up, on, up on the grounds. I'm begging and pleading, literally begging for assistance for my men and women. They're not sending them. I have to wait three and a half hours. You know, I do the research in the book. You know what I find? I find this. I find a document from the Secretary of Defense restricting the National Guard from even carrying uh, any type of chemical munitions, any kind of munitions for civil disobedience, any kind of protective gear, any kind of helmets, shields, for the very violence they expected to come on January 6th. Millie and Miller had talked about it. They had talked about it in... Um, Conference calls, 
talked about tra locking down the city, talked about revoking permits. You know who issues permits on, on Capitol grounds? I do. You know who they didn't tell about that violence? Me. They, they could have told me we could have helped prevent this. My men and women didn't have to go through that. Did anyone apologize to you? Because let's be honest, they all knew better. They don't need to apologize to me. They need to apologize to my men and women. Oh, my goodness. Um, given all of that, have any of these rules and regulations changed in the last two years? If we, if our capital was attacked tomorrow, would anything be different? They've changed one rule. The rule that prevented me from calling in federal resources during a, a, an attack, so why we're under attack like we were on January 6th, was changed in December with the United States Capitol Police, I think it's the Emergency Amendment Act of December 2021. It gave the chief of police the ability to call in federal resources without having to go to the three politically appointed people in the Capitol Police Board, the voting members of the board, to get their approval. So he can call it in. But you know what they did? They made it revocable. So if the leadership says, you know what, we don't like the quote, the look, the optics of the National Guard on the Hill, we can revoke it. But if, like, when I went and asked for the National Guard on January 3rd, they still have to go through that process. I, I'm, I, I, to, to hear you say this is just painful and shocking. Then how does it make you feel that now Capitol tour guides who are giving tourists and, and class trips a tour of the Capitol, they don't mention what happened on January 6th? Good or bad, it is a part of U.S. history. It, it is a part of U.S. history, and I know... I was just talking with the Capitol Police officer shortly before I came in here, and they were explaining a lot of times when people come in, they'll ask them about January 6th, and, and these officers are still so traumatized, and it's just not Capitol Police officers. I've talked to hardened metropolitan police officers who have said they thought they were going to die that day, um, and they still have... traumatized just from watching. And they have difficulty talking about it, so it, it doesn't shock me. You know, it's again, there's, a, you know, just so much political theater down on uh, uh, Capitol Hill. It's all politics. I'm so grateful you wrote this book. I'm, I'm thankful for the work that you've done in protecting so many people. And thanks for being here today. Thank you for being. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Thank you.